Uh, Everett Kamakawa is uh, the president of Researcher Network or Recruiter Network of Southeastern Wisconsin. He's also a heck of a nice guy. But he spoke here two, two years ago. We, we enjoyed him so much that uh, we wanted to have him back. And tonight he's going to present why they say no, common mistakes job seekers make. So please help me welcome Everett. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, everyone here at Crossroads. Show of hands, how many people have seen me speak before? For those of you who are seeing me again, I thank you for enduring the pain. <laughs> who are see who's seeing me speak for the first time? You'll get to share their pain next time. <laughs> and how many people have never seen me speak before? Right, there's always a couple that I catch on that as part of that. Uh, I appreciate the time today. And Tom is going to run my slide, slide, my screen presentation. So this is the first time that I've worked with a partner. So, yeah. So, this is, forgive us as we, we we didn't get a chance to practice, you know. But I like to begin all my presentations, be it a sales presentation, be it a, a speech, in regards to a covenant. And that covenant starts with a big thank you. I want to thank you for being here tonight, for sharing your time with me. I have a passion for helping people find jobs. It's what I've been doing for the last 16 years, and I promise you tonight that I will speak with passion, I'll convey that passion with you, and I want to thank you for your time. I'm going to be blunt, I'm going to be candid, I'm going to be honest, because your time and your job search is too important for me not to be, okay? So I thank you very much for allowing me to pursue my passion and to help you. Some other things as part of this covenant. Why am I here? I've been doing this, like I say, for the past 16 years. I've spoken literally with thousands and thousands of employers. This is information that I have gleaned from them over that time. It's also information that I personally have put into practice. Now, there's a second part of this covenant, and that is your part. And that is, as part of your covenant today, I would like you to please grab one or two little ideas, just arrows that you can put in your quiver, so that when you're out there looking for jobs, you can say, hmm, that might be in handy. I can use that. Bam! hit that target, okay? The other thing is, is if you love what I say tonight, if you think I do a good job, I write a blog. It's called Ev's Recruitment Answers. You can also just Google Everett Kamakawa or Google heck of a nice guy. If you like what you hear tonight, I ask you please sometime in the next month, go there twice. And if you don't like what I have to say tonight, go there once, okay? I write generally as a view from a recruiter and from an HR salesperson, so you can kind of consider that intelligence inside information. But there is a section for job seekers, so I write from a job seeker's perspective, so a lot of what I'm about to say tonight you can find there, and if it's not there now, it will be shortly. Why am I here? Well, like everyone else, I've had many jobs, I've been quit, or excuse me, I've been fired, or I've quit from all of them, except for the two that I'm doing right now, thankfully. Who knows, that might change tomorrow. And you know what? It probably will. But does everyone remember where they were on September 10th, 2001? No one. Next day was 9-11. Changed the world. Changed our lives. My life actually changed on September 10th because the company that I own suddenly was sold out from underneath my feet. Long story, long, complicated. I'm not going to bore you with it. And quite frankly, it's not that interesting. But it took me over a year to find a job. Now, how about January 20th, 2010? Anybody remember where you were then? Well, the employer that I left got the job with from the first one decided to pack up shop and head out of Milwaukee, close their offices. So, I was out again. The difference is whereas it took me over a year to find a job the first time, 90 minutes for the second time. Middle of the recession. The reason why are all the things I'm going to share with you right now. So, now the next part of your covenant for you is to have a little fun. I, I like to have fun, so please laugh if you need to laugh. Those cookies are calling my name back there. Please feel free to get up and eat and drink, okay, as part of that. So, with that, this is also an audience participation presentation. Everyone's going, oh no. You have four words that you need to say. Everyone here has seen the movie Star Wars? Yeah. All right. First two words are Star Wars. So on the count of three, I'd like everyone to say that. One, two, three. Star Wars! It was a little weak. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Star Wars! Okay. A little better. Who's this guy? Darth Vader. Darth Vader. 
Those are the second two words. So on the count of three, I want you to say Darth Vader. One, two, three. Darth Vader. One more. Come on, one more. Crank it in there. Come on, give me the energy. Give me the love. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Now, don't worry. I have no books to sell. I am not going to sign you up for any motivation <laughs> seminars, anything like that. So, what's going on? You're out in the marketplace. You hear about the economy is improving. You're not getting a job. Why not? Well, a lot of people don't realize that the market has changed significantly since our last recession. Actually, not even, just in the last three, four years. Basically, what happened is the first two departments that get cut, usually when it comes time of a recession, the companies have to start cutting costs in terms of people, are marketing and HR. Right now, the HR staffs are overloaded. There's not enough people on staff, and there's a lot more applicants coming in. Three, four years ago, you might have been one of 50 people that were applying. Now you're one of 500 people applying. So they have less people to go through the resumes and go through the interviews. How do you stand out? The other thing that you need to do is you need to understand that it used to be that recruiters and HR managers used to find a way to include people in their maybe pile. Who is it that I want to talk to? Maybe this person, maybe that person. Well, this person's kind of close, so I'll put them in the maybe pile. Now, there's so few staff and they're getting so many more resumes, they're looking for ways to disclude people. Don't give them a reason to disclude you. And some of the things that I'm about to show you right now are some of the things that they're telling me that is, is happening that people just forget. Maybe no one's told you. And what I like to do here is kind of put everything all in one place so you can see what's going on as part of that. Now before you apply, have a proper email address. Don't have one of these, please. These are real email addresses that I've called from job seekers over the past three weeks. Uh, I, I love this one. I shoot people. <laughs> Any, anyone know why? Photographer. He's a photographer, exactly. But, you know, Crazy J, that guy's an IT manager. I don't want someone running my IT network who's crazy, yeah. you know? Dirty white kid, spud bone, not to mention sexy, nah, you know? Sexy firefighter, too. That was actually a firefighter that posed for a, uh, uh, one of those charity calendars. And he was the month of February. It's like, oh, I've gone by that for years. I thought it would be kind of funny. No, people don't like that. Have a proper voicemail. Seems kind of basic. We all carry around these things right here. These cell phones. Have a proper voicemail set up on them. Don't let the generic... You have reached 414-312. Do not leave that on your cell phone. Do not leave this voicemail is not activated yet on your cell phone. Also, don't leave messages like, if you don't leave a message, I will kill you. That is a real job seeker that I called that I was working with and said, oh my gosh, you got to get rid of that. I had another job seeker who thought he was funny. He left a little message. Hi, this is blah, 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 blah. I'm not censoring anything. That was the message. Blah, 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 blah. If, if you're an employer, well, can you take that candidate seriously? Don't have anything too cute. Don't have anything sinister. Here's the other thing. Have a positive, upbeat tone. Don't just say, hi, this is Everett. You want to say, hi, this is Everett. You have almost reached me. Please leave your name and number and I'll return your call within 24 hours. Something that's professional, something that's upbeat, something where you have inflection in your voice that makes it sound like you're funny. Once again, you can have oh, a good person. They don't have to be funny, but you know, someone that's got your, got some energy, you got some enthusiasm. Cover letter. Do you have one? And I know everyone's used to applying online now and you think you don't need one. 99.9% .9 of the people I agree with that. No. Put a cover letter in for every job that you apply, even if it's online. Make sure it's tailored to that position and that company. Also, make sure it's short and to the point. Your first sentence should be, um, I'm applying for this particular position. I think I'd be a great fit for your company or some other such sense, but name the position in that first paragraph. And that first paragraph is one, maybe two sentences. The body of the letter then, that second paragraph, three to four. Explain your qualifications, why you're a good fit. Don't talk about your job search. Don't talk about why you got fired. Don't talk about the problems that you're having finding a job. Don't. It's three to four sentences. This is why I'm qualified. This is why you want to talk to me. Third paragraph, 
Once again, back to one or two sentences. Thank you very much for your consideration. I really look forward to meeting with you to talk about this particular position. Name, sign it, and then your contact information also below that. As part of this, do not write your cut a lever as to whom it may concern. Find a name. Go on LinkedIn, go on Hoover's or any of those other contact sites, ask friends, you know, do that old fashioned thing, you pick up the phone and call. Hi, Everett Industries. Hi, my name is Everett. I'm applying for this particular position at your company. I'm just putting together my cover letter and resume and can you please tell me who I can address it to? Sure, send it to here. Maybe they say, no, I can't. Okay, is there someone in particular that I should make sure that gets this information? Yeah. No, I'm not gonna give you that name. Okay, great, well, is there a different way or is there someone, a standard system that you like to have people apply to follow to make sure that my letter gets to the right person? Sure, it's this. Or maybe they transfer you back to HR. You get, hi, this is Everett in HR. Hi, Everett, this is Everett. I'm applying for this particular position. If you could just please help me out, I am not, I just want to apply and I just want to get the correct contact information for my cover letter. Can I get the proper spelling of your name? Are you the person that I should send this information to? Sure, absolutely, here it is. Maybe I'm not, maybe they send you to someplace else. Don't name drop either without the other person's permission. That's very important. I actually had someone from a presentation I did a couple of weeks ago, they sent through their letter. Fortunately, they sent it to me. And they said, my friend Everett has told me about this job at your place, and you know what, and his wife works there too, and blah, 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 blah. Thank goodness this person sent it to me first. Because that, while well, I'm a heck of a nice guy, there are a couple of people that don't like me, I found out, and the person at this particular company is one of the people that just doesn't like me. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I try. So your resume. Watch your basic formatting. The little things that, for example, in this particular, and this is a real resume that was sent to the company I'm at now. Obviously, Jerry Seinfeld is not the real name of the person that really sent this to me, but my manager said, you know, this looks like a pretty cool person. Um, I'm gonna call him. Where, where's the phone number? Right. Also, watch your spelling. Notice it's Jerry Seinfeld at the top. Where does he work? Well, Seinfeld Computers, but he misspelled Seinfeld. Um, it used to be, once again, that you might be able to get away with one spelling mistake on your resume. Maybe two, depending on who the HR manager is. Now, none. Double check, recheck, spell check does not get all of them. So make sure you have someone else read through it. Also, look at the different things in terms of the margins. Look at the dates, the 2006 to the 9,080 here. They're all over the place. Line them up. General accepted rule is over on, that would be, let's see, for how I'm reading this here. That would be on my right side, right? Yeah. Look at the margin over here. Inconsistent. Why is all the other things over here? This one's way over there. Bullet points. Just like any, when you learned in English how to write an outline, if you write, and if you have a Roman numeral one, you have to have a Roman numeral two. If you have an A, you have to have a B. If you have a one, you have to have a two. Same thing on a resume. You can't just have one bullet point like they have there. You gotta have two. One of my favorites, the bad career objective poem. A career objective basically is giving that employer something about you, your passion, where are you lying, why are you applying for this position?